He was there in Brighton. Robin, good morning. Good morning, Justin. Let's start off with the Archbishop. He's, he's not just going to be um, issuing platitudes, is he? He's going to have some pretty specific things to say about rights that he believes that workers should have. Well, indeed, when he's uh, going to tell them that workers have a, a moral right uh, to union recognition and that employers have a moral duty to recognize unions, that is going to be uh, manna from heaven as far as the TUC delegates are concerned. They're going to enjoy that kind of language, which seems to be uh, likely to come from the Archbishop with an enthusiasm that they feel perhaps is, is lacking in Tony Blair's approach they're a little bit suspicious of the Prime Minister's approach. Remember he came two years ago to a TUC Congress and his speech was falling flat until he suddenly threw away his notes at the end and talked from the heart about what socialism meant to him. And they have been unnerved, I think, by the way in which he used the election rather to distance himself from the unions and to gloat that even after a Labour government, uh, Britain would have the toughest union laws in the Western world. Do you think he's going to keep that distance today or are we today going to see a, a, a rapprochement? Oh, I think there'll be some degree of rapprochement in the sense that the TUC delegates are going to be very pleased to have the first Prime Minister here for nearly 20 years. They're pleased that the government is doing things in a direction that they want. The, the signing up to the social chapter, which offers uh, more union rights, there are moves on the way to the minimum wage, not perhaps as high and as fast, uh, as high a level or happening as fast as they'd like, but that's again something that they want to see. There's been the recognition of unions at uh, Cheltenham GCHQ. There's a lot of things moving in the direction that the unions want, but they just feel it isn't happening with quite the enthusiasm they would like because Mr. Blair is addressing a wider audience uh, and is talking all the while about fairness, not favours. Well, they probably like a few favours here. And there are some specific issues where Mr Blair, it seems, is, 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 is willing to be completely blunt with them. I'm specifically thinking of the issue of, um, of so-called solidarity strikes and, and secondary strikes and secondary picketing. They'd like Mr Blair to think deeply about those things, and he's saying, no, we're happy with the law as it is. Absolutely. I mean, as he said in the course of the election, Labour suffered very badly in the past from its association with the wilder shores of trades unionism. He hasn't spent three years modernising the Labour Party in order to have it dragged down by the wrong kind of industrial action. There is no way, he says, that they are going back to the trade union laws of the 1970s. But what he will do is to address the fairness at work agenda. He will, I think, underline the government's promise that there will be recognition for unions in firms where 50% of those employed actually want that recognition. So uh, it, it's moving in the right direction for the unions, uh, but there's still this slight distancing, there's still the feeling that they're not quite on the same wavelength. Uh, I think the unions feel that Tony Blair treats them rather like, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the awkward aunt at a wedding who's got to be invited because she can be relied upon for a good present, but you're a bit embarrassed to uh, introduce her to the in-laws. <laughs> Robin Oakley in uh, Brighton. Thanks very much. The situation is reported to be tense on the outskirts of the Bosnian town of Banja Luka after supporters of the former president, Radovan Karadzic, were stopped by police and NATO troops from entering the town. They were attempting to join a rally in the town centre in defiance of a ban by the president, Biljana Plavzic. 75 buses were turned back. Passengers responded by throwing stones at the soldiers and police. Foreign Secretary Robin Cook is expected to call for deep cuts in Europe's spending on agriculture in a speech in Germany this evening. He says that total spending by the European Union must be reduced to relieve the burden on major contributors, including Britain and Germany. The latest survey of retailers suggests that four rises in mortgage rates since the election led to a slowing of consumer spending last month. The British Retail Consortium says its study also shows no signs of consumer boom being created by the spending of building society windfalls. Thousands of people have continued to pay their respects to Diana, Princess of Wales, following Saturday's funeral. Flowers were placed outside Kensington Palace last night and a service of remembrance held at Tetbury Parish Church near Prince Charles's Highgrove Estate. It's been confirmed that the task of removing the floral tributes, thought to number over a million, will begin on Thursday. Despite the lateness of the hour, crowds continued to throng around Kensington Palace last night. The desire of so many people to demonstrate their affection for the princess shows no sign of diminishing. Please wait here to cross the road. The palace has become the focal point for public remembrance. It's here that the books of condolence are open around the clock. 
The mass of flowers here will start to be moved on Thursday. Those still fresh will go to hospitals and old people's homes. Last night at the parish church near the Prince of Wales Highgrove estate, there was a thanksgiving service for Diana's life. It's at Highgrove that the prince is now privately comforting his two young sons. Diana was a familiar sight in the community here during her marriage. In Paris, as the investigation into the fatal crash goes on, new blood tests have been carried out on the driver's body. His family have disputed results which showed he was three times over the French drink drive limit. The results of these latest tests haven't yet been made public. As the princess's death is mourned across the world, off the coast of California, hundreds of floral tributes to her have been scattered in the Pacific Ocean. They'd been left outside the British consulate since last week. Dolphins dive in this stretch of water. It was felt this was a suitable final setting for Diana's flowers. June Kelly, BBC News. It is uh, 18 minutes past eight, still to come in the next hour or so, as the trend towards ending positive discrimination in the United States gathers momentum. There are fears that attitudes towards racism have taken a step backwards. And a plan to preserve the floral tributes for...